Coop Aleworks has been growing significantly in recent years. We've known as early as two to three years ago that we were going to eventually grow out of the space that we're currently in down by the airport. Um, and so with that in mind, we began looking for a place that could be our final home, that we could grow into and had significant amount of space. We wanted to be back towards the urban core where we really started over at 51st and Western. Um, and there were significant law changes that made a project like this economically viable. And so we looked for a couple of years for properties in different areas and never could really find the right fit. And when this became available from the state, uh, we took one look at it and just knew that this was the right place for us and that it added an opportunity for us to diversify our business above and beyond being a production brewery and moving into restaurant and hospitality. Right now, I'm standing on the drill hall floor what, of what used to be the 45th Infantry Division's armory. Uh, this drill hall floor will become the production brewery for our brewery moving forward. On the second floor overlooking the Capitol Dome on the east side will be a restaurant uh, with a patio overflow uh, overlooking the dome. On the third floor above it will be private event space that will be, uh, that will be rentable for wedding receptions, business meetings, convention pre-receptions, those sorts of things. And then on the west side of the building overlooking Broadway Extension on the second and third floor, uh, we'll have 22 rooms at a boutique hotel that overlooks the brewery floor. You guys have got a kind of a shot from the floor. Uh, this building is pretty challenging. Um, there's a lot of open dramatic space. And I think that's one of the reasons that there were so few applicants in the RFP response, but it's perfectly suited for our use. If you've ever been to a brewery, first thing you'll notice is all of the vertical that needs to be used. So all the fermentation tanks, the brew house, uh, there's a lot of vertical space utilized. And so this is a great opportunity for us to come here and plant our operation and really never have to move again. So um, the building is about 87,000 square feet once taken the circulation and everything into account. And um, as Sean alluded to in the plans, the total plan includes a hotel and a restaurant and the brewing operations. But the primary floor here is gonna be ops. The surround on the first floor is mostly offices and production support. And then the second floor here on your east wing is the restaurant and patio facing the Capitol. The third floor on the east side, again, is the tap or the uh, expansion of the tap room and the dedicated event space. And then second and third floors on the west wing are the hotel rooms, including two suites here on the second floor on the south end. So um, not much visually is going to change here. What's beautiful about this view here is the deck and the ceiling, the bowstring trusses. And that's something that we really want to preserve. We want to preserve that sight line. So a lot of times in breweries, you'll see things hanging from the ceiling and you're not going to see that here. We're going to run all of our support utilities and mechanical on raceways that are relatively low so we can maintain the ceiling. The lighting will be updated and you might see a couple of uh, large fans, but that's about all that will change with the deck. The American Redwood is original to the building from 1938. Uh, great bug and water prevention. Right now, uh, we are wrapping up the legal work to make the transaction with the state. We're purchasing the property, including some surrounding real estate for $600,000. We'll eventually invest $20 million into the redevelopment. Uh, that redevelopment will begin in September with some demolition inside the building and demolition exterior for parking. Uh, and it will move along to construction in March of 2019. And our goal is to be open in the fall of 2020. We commissioned an economics professor from the University of Central Oklahoma to do an economic impact study for us. And um, they concluded that including spillover effect to the surrounding community that when fully operational in 2025, this facility will generate $26 million of economic impact for the community.